Although this carpet may seem like it's one piece, it's actually made up of several that can be recycled separately. In San Francisco, Viral Don, KTVU Channel 2 News. In Oakland, Viral Don, KTVU Channel 2 News. In San Francisco, Viral Don, KTVU Channel 2 News. Cal officials say they'll warn protesters 10 minutes before cops move in to give them enough time to leave and to avoid being arrested. In Berkeley, Viral Don, KTVU Channel 2 News. A Bay Area landlord is facing a lot of legal trouble for not maintaining her rental properties like the one right here. And city officials are saying that she has broken many laws in the last 10 years. They, Tenants uh, like Maria and her father, who showed us their broken shower, sink and toilet, hope that things get better. I hope we get this fixed soon. Oakland neighborhood law attorney Jesse Newmark says they have stacks of documentation about complaints. There are 10,000 pictures of cracked walls, chain gates, and even rats and roaches, all evidence of housing, health, and fire code violations. One of Gardner's properties caught fire recently, and city officials say there were no smoke detectors. These all show what tenants have had to deal with. These are a lot of really vulnerable tenants, low-income seniors, disabled people, um, immigrants. There's a lot of people who are being taken advantage of. But Gardner says she is the victim. She told us that tenants cause problems like breaking fixtures to avoid paying rent. People pay the rent, never complain. People never pay the rent, they complain. But Maria says her family's been doing their part. We've been paying rent for four years, even though it's been like this. Gardner says she's been overwhelmed with bills, mail, and tenant lawsuits, and she dumped a bag full of them in front of us. If I make mistake, I'm apologize for whole city if I make the mistake. According to the court order, renters will not have to pay rent until all their problems are fixed. In Oakland, Viral Dan, KTVU Channel 2 News. We're here in Union Square, and if you can take a look behind me, cab traffic is now back to normal. This afternoon, hundreds of cabs took to the streets, but they weren't taking any fares. San Francisco City Hall was surrounded with a sea of yellow, white, and red. Cab drivers protested against many issues, mainly the 5% credit card fee. Cab driver Ahmad al Bawaya says the charge cuts into his and other cab drivers' bottom line. So when I go to the airport and the customer give me four dollars, give me two dollars tip, two dollars to the cab company. It's not going to me because they charge me four percent. Cab drivers took their concerns to City Hall. They want the municipal hall to take action. If they give the five percent, I to be fair for the cab driver. The MTA says they have already tried to resolve the problem. So what we try to do was um, increase their income, and, and we've done that halfway by increasing. Uh, the, the wages for the distance and time rates, um, and we look to increase the flag drop as well. Cab drivers made a real effort to be heard. LeBon Wade, who's been hailing taxis for 20 years, says he noticed. So I can tell there's a lot less taxis that are out, but there still are a few guys driving, you know, I guess it's a recession, you know. But cab passengers say they didn't even All notice right. any change. Now we arrived at the airport and within minutes we had a cab. San Francisco's MTA is set to have a meeting later on this month and they will decide whether to increase the initial price of a cab ride. In San Francisco, Viral Don, KTVU Channel 2 News. Complete Bay Area news coverage starts right now. This is KTVU Channel 2 News at 5. Good evening, I'm Beryl Dunn, and this is the KTVU Channel 2 News. The Family of Giants fan Brian Stowe reports that he is making progress in his recovery. Stowe has been hospitalized with brain injuries since being severely beaten in the Dodger Stadium parking lot in March. Stowe's family posted on its website that Stowe is mouthing words. The family isn't saying what he's mouthing other than that it made them cry. They say that the 42-year-old is often sleepy, but when he is awake, he is responsive. Oakland police tell KTVU News its investigators are still trying to track down where a toddler was shot yesterday. Officers responded to this section of MacArthur Boulevard and other locations yesterday afternoon, but found no trace of a shooting. The boy's relatives took him to Highland Hospital. He's now recovering at Oakland's Children's Hospital. A bullet passed through his arm. Police say that the boy's mother is unfamiliar with Oakland and provided them with multiple locations. 
Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is speaking out today against the eight-year prison sentences handed down by an Iranian court to two UC Berkeley graduates. Clinton said the U.S. is deeply disappointed in the guilty verdict and sentencing of Shane Bauer and Josh Fatal. The court yesterday found them guilty of espionage and trespassing. The two and other hiker Sarah Shord say they were only hiking near an unmarked border. Shord was released last year for medical reasons and did not return for the trial. Iran considers her case still open. Documents show that PG&E was aware of weld risks on troubled pipeline 132 since at least 2008. A section of that pipeline exploded in San, Fr San Bruno neighborhood last year, killing eight people. The San Francisco Chronicle reports that a December 2008 memo turned over to federal investigators notes suspected manufacturing threats on the pipeline. PG and Eden undertake costly pressure testing of the pipeline. A spokesman for the utility acknowledged to the paper its operations weren't what it should be and is taking steps to improve. A special group of tourists gets a fun-filled day in San Francisco. How the police department had a hand in their special day. Juvenile offenders sentenced to life in prison may get a break. The proposal that may allow them to one day get out of jail.